Dakota and I have just arrived in the Peruvian Amazon and are just about to begin our ayahuasca journey. This video shares our honest thoughts and feelings before being catapulted into Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You're a bloody wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. I will be soon releasing a series of ayahuasca diaries explaining my experiences, documentaries and a trip simulation among other awesome pieces of content. And, you know, I'm back home in Australia now and all I can say is that holy jeebus was this a profound experience and I just can't wait to share this with you guys. Keep an eye out and hit that notification bell and feel free to support our work so we can keep doing what we do. Cheers, guys. So you just arrived today. How do you feel? Yeah, so this is day one for me out here in the jungle of wherever we are in Peru somewhere. So this is like proper, proper in the jungle. I'm sure, of course, you can go much deeper, but yeah, we're, when you have to go by boat. <laughs> um, you know, you're you're in some real shit. We actually had a you missed it because you came late. But when we arrived, we had like a welcome party. There was like this all these native tribes like singing, playing really? drums and shit as we rocked up. Yeah. I'll show you the video. You got a video of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking cool. I do feel a little bit more confident now that I'm here. Yeah. And that like everyone, there's a like, community kind of, so I feel like that takes away a little bit of the nervousness. The anxiousness, yeah. But it's definitely yep. still there. I'm going to take it easy. That's what I've decided is that like I don't have to overdo it. And I think feel like that's what was really scaring me is that like just like going for it. No. Nah, I don't think I need that type nah. of feeling. I just want to meet the plant. Well, that's exactly how I got punished the last time. Just going for it's it? It's just going too hard. And even though like the first ceremony, I had a pretty intense experience. And then the next night, the facilitator asked me, hey, do you want more? Or do, you, do you want to stay the same? And I'm like, yeah, give me more. You know, just kind of pushing it. And then whoppa, just got absolutely hyper slapped for it. So, And I can't say this is the case with everybody, but it seems to be a very common thing that if you go into this experience with arrogance, yeah. You, yeah, you, you're gonna pay for it, so take it at, at your own pace. Well, at least know? I know I'm not coming in, coming in arrogant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm still. I don't know. I don't know. I can't pinpoint what it is that I'm a little scared of. Cause you threw up on the plane and shit on the way here. Yeah, I've been Dude, real I was, nervous, I, man. I was feeling anxiety for like this past week, like every morning waking up with that. Oh shit, here we go. And it's so weird. But here we are. I kept telling myself, like, fuck, man, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my dogs. And now I'm <laughs> yeah. going to fast forward and I'm going to be in fucking a middle circle room with people shitting themselves and puking on some crazy jungle drug. Yeah, and th th what's weird because, like, here we are. I was, you know, I made a video yesterday talking about it how the last few times I've done ayahuasca, it's always because, like, I'm there to do specific deep work or, I don't know, maybe I'm not happy with my life. Whereas right now I'm like, I'm genuinely happy with how things gone. I'm living yeah. the life of my dreams. I've got an awesome girlfriend. I have an amazing house. So it's a totally different mindset coming in here. And I don't know how that's going to play out. I guess my intention is to, yeah, reconnect with the medicine. You know, yeah, I mean, you had a bad experience. Yeah, that, yeah, I feel like there's like some rekindling that can be done. Yeah, and that can be like sure. an intention. Like and I know when I went in the Maloka talking about my intention, of talk, they asked me if I had a car crash specifically, which I have. And they think that's played some yeah, sort of trauma. And I had, you know, they asked, do you have any addictive issues? I'm like, oh, yeah, I've dealt with addiction as being like the biggest, you know, quote unquote demon of my life. And I, and I told them, like, yeah, you know, I struggle with weed, I guess. And they told me that they're going to give me this purgative on Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> is not cool because I don't like throwing up and we're gonna do cambo tomorrow morning as well dude we're doing cambo this is to start the experience this is our breakfast man. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. cambo <laughs> cuts to my scene of just me crying my eyes out yeah <laughs> project out loud water <laughs> A little bit. 
Not so much. Humbly, humbly. Yeah, feeling better, but my lips are like very. It hurts. <laughs> Señores, terminamos nuestra ceremonia. My Muchas gracias. My will close this ceremony. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I've never drank two liters of water in my life. That's in the hardest sitting. part. That's the hardest part. You, dude, that's just to have something to throw up. Actually, now that you just reminded me, every time, the last couple of times I've done this ayahuasca experience, you come out of this retreat never wanted to drink water again just because of that <laughs> just how much you throw you associate don't you water don't you almost puke you know? just from drinking in the water yeah man yeah. It's, it's terrible and it's like it's probably going to be like this lukewarm you know you picture you, you picture like you're drinking this amazon water or some shit and all these parasites that's how, how Jesus. I, that's where my mind goes anyway <sighs> yeah what's your what's your intention my intention for ayahuasca is just to be in the presence of her mm. and just try to like just be like this the whole time, you know, like, just like, if you met, like, a saint or something, you'd yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. you just, you, like, pay your respects. Yeah, like, you pay your respects, yourself. and you come, and you look at them, and you feel spiritual just by their mm -hmm. presence, and I feel like I, that's ayahuasca, ayahuasca is, is a teacher, and I'm just here to take the class, I guess. Yeah, man. And it's, you know, it's, kitty, it's, kitty, kitty. it's different for everybody, but there are th thematic kind of elements to it. Like it's, well, a lot of people will say like the first ceremony is like just saying hello, getting the, the medicine welcome to, into your body, introducing to your body, and then it becomes more of a purgative thing, and then you start becoming more open to the light. But, you know, sometimes it might not be that at all. Definitely not having expectations help. A lot. It helps. Yeah. yeah. And you, you also, with your intention, you got to be careful because you might just get what you wish for. Oh, that's like I was talking real. to my mom about that, and I was like, I don't know what my intention is because, like, I gotta make sure that I really want to see what I'm asking for. Mm. Like, what am I gonna say? Like, oh, I want you to remove my ego or like <laughs> show me how to lose the fear of death or something oh, and then you're just like no. or face childhood trauma for example i've, I've had that or say show me who before. you really no. are Did you ever hear terence mckenna say that to oh. the mushroom terence mckenna asked the mushroom to show who it, what it really is show me your true form i've had those trips and it's you can't ask for that no 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 yeah he said he's, he was begging for it to stop before <laughs> it even started like the second he asked he was begging for it to stop it's so funny because like i was watching a movie the other night and like, did you have the experience of like ayahuasca kind of working through you before, like w as soon as you booked the tickets, you know what I mean? It's been working working through me for two weeks now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've had the same experience, like shit coming up. Just, like, yeah, just anxieties coming up, different things I'm worried about, or like, even like these little purges I've been having, just like, I mm. cried one night. I've been I didn't want to admit it, but I cried one night. I was watching a girl talk about her ayahuasca experience, and it was just like, just a girl talking, and for some reason it made me cry. I was like, oh mm. fuck, man, the medicine's already working for me. Getting like more emotional. And it wasn't even anything, just a girl talking about her trip. And yeah, like, for me it's been like anger. That's like the really? main thing, yeah. A lot of anger. A lot of fear. And I keep trying to tell myself, like, what I want is, is beyond that fear. Like, that fear is going to stop me from being able to see what I want to see. Or like, or like, you know, fear is always stops us from seeing everything that we that is right in front of us. So I keep yeah. having to tell myself, like, Fear is like go to, on the other side of that fear because that's where you, that's where you want to be. But, like how do you, how do you explain that though? Just like how the medicine works before you even take it. Like for me, it might make some rational sense because I've done it before, so it's like already in my system. But for yourself, you never done it. For me, but yeah, it still does shit. You know, before even coming to the jungle. Because I think it's all real. <laughs> like I think shamanism is real. Oh yeah. I think all these entities and spirits and different plants I just feel like it's all like it's not just your brain being flooded with chemicals and you tripping out I think you're actually experiencing something real mm. but even, even if it is chemical it's always a reflection of something much greater like I mean this is chemicals uh, yeah exactly what does that yeah. even mean it's yeah. just like chemicals like, it's just okay, a way for yeah. people to Re rationalize it yeah and, yeah and, and reduce, reduce it. it yeah yeah but yeah, just the, even the other night, I was having like one of these, I guess, mini pre-ayahuasca trips. And I was like, oh, fuck, getting that, a little bit of that existential anxiety, like, oh, fuck. I'm, I'm glad you got am, am, am I going to like... Everyone must be going to that, right? Yeah. It's not just me. Okay. Am I going to face some like real deep shit and 
that I just said, I literally said out loud by myself, like, please be kind. Oh, I was, please I've be been kind. saying that out loud for <laughs> two weeks. Just please be gentle. Please, like, I, yeah, I've, I've been learned chanting my lesson. straight for two weeks, just chanting, just anything I can think of, like, chanting Hindu mantras and <laughs> just anything, like, love, 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 love. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, yeah, because it, it, it doesn't get any easier. Like, this is my, this is going to be my 11th ceremony. I look like we're still, like, shitting our pants pretty much the same, you know? But it's like a, not, not shitting it in pants, it's more of like a respect kind of thing. I think it's healthy to have a little bit of that fear. I would be worried if you yeah. had none of that. Because every, everyone's dealing with it. But Some of these guys, man, I don't get it. They're like, yeah, this is my seven, 70th ceremony. It's like, <laughs> dude, how do you drink it 70 times? Well, Jose's done it 200 times. How? You must, like, the things you must have seen to do that that many times. And everyone's doing 5 meo dmt this week, yeah, right. which, right now, I think, no, I don't think I'm going to do it, but... But the cool thing is that so many people are doing it, that at least one of them will let us film their experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot his name. Doug? The Canadian dude. Doug. Yeah. Is it Doug? I think so. The one we were talking to that was talking about the Yahweh book? No, 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 no. Oh, the Canadian one. No, he's uh, the one that wouldn't let us film him. Oh, yeah, talk yeah. about his experience, yeah, but not... Yeah, he's like, I'm running up on YouTube shit. The Canadian dude. Yeah. He said that you can, I can film him. <laughs> Spike DMT. He said you could? Yeah. That's cool. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to do that one. I think it's just... Personally, I think it's too much. It's an overkill what they have us going through. Yeah. Like we what Cambo starting off with ayahuasca. And the next day, ayahuasca. And the sapo. And then the next week in the Sacred Valley, three ayahuasca ceremonies. There's four ayahuasca ceremonies here. Yeah, four. And then three in the Sacred Valley, one San Pedro ceremony. And they also do a sapo. Ceremony and Temascal well. and Temascal and just like man, we're doing like all these meditations and but the shaman man it was so, what do you, what do you think about the the chunta so oh yeah basically this sh this shaman that we have Justina she's been dieting this plant for twenty months I forgot what it was and she gained the skill that she can like like for example you might have a physical pain or whatever and then she energetically sucks it and then for some weird reason it materializes into it could be like an insect like a bug or a nail or a fish bone and she spits it out and it seems like such a crazy thing yeah like jose the guy that yeah. invited us here and runs this owns this he uh was telling us how this uh, what's it called chunta chunta yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah is how this shaman can like do like this kind of reiki energy healing on you and literally suck shit out of your body so like she'll put her lips on your chest for example and just start sucking and then she'll spit stuff out that's inside of you <laughs> um apparently we can film this and you can see it in broad daylight so oh, apparently fuck, it's not bullshit even though it sounds like some hippie magic nonsense i don't, believe I don't it. know do you believe it i do just because I've, I've had a few ayahuasca ceremonies and i've i've just seen some just some weird i believe shit, i definitely know that stuff i know that's enough. that's taking it a next level and i know you have uh, i don't know i don't know i I feel I like I could believe it, but... These shamans know so much stuff that we just aren't even... But spitting out, like, a metallic nail? Yeah, I mean, that's what I don't understand. It's like, and why? then she passes out. Yeah, sometimes she passes out because it's, like, it's so much that she's taken on all this negative energy. But apparently it helps some people. She doesn't do it to everybody. It just depends, like, where I'm you curious. are and what you I'm need. Curious. But I want to see that, but I apparently want to do it on me. we're going... Apparently we're we're gonna film and some this people say in broad daylight. And some people so. scream because it hurts so bad. Yeah, yeah. So I'm curious to see. I want her to do it on me and like. Yeah, cause someone's saying it was like the most excruciating pain. Pull whatever out of me. And you can feel it come in. Like Jose, uh, Jose was talking about the first time he had back pain, and he was like skeptic, thinking like, okay, she's obviously pulling my leg, just fucking with me. But he felt this thing just move through his spine and then break the skin, and then it came out as a live beetle. And it wasn't that the, the live beetle was in his body. It was an energetic blockage that materialized as a beetle. Yeah, that's how that's what he it, says he thinks. It's and yeah, I know what I just said, and it just sounds absolutely insane, but I don't know, man. That's transmutation on the whole other level, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so you legit don't believe that? Like, if no. you had to bet money... Like if you if had I had to bet money, money on it, I would probably say no. Okay. But repeatedly like these kind of cultures have proven me to be insane and like have knowledge on things that we think is not real mm. like these people are living in a world that we think is a fairy tale but they're 
like the, the fact that you can drink a plant and communicate with it, like have a conversation in the same way that we're talking to each other. That doesn't sound real to, to anyone at home. Like you tell that to a, a person walking on the street, hey, I got this plant, it'll talk to you. <laughs> yeah, right, just tell the You can have a conversation with this plant and it'll heal you. You'd be like, all right, fuck off. And like communicate with spirits and stuff like that. People would be like, yo, someone call the ambulance, Tom's having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so it's true though. Because if, you, it's, if you explain, real. if you explain your peak psychedelic that's experiences real. to an average person, they're going to think you're absolutely nuts. And it's real. But it's real. It is real. And that's what makes me believe that maybe it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. And who knows how far this goes, right? Magic might you be ma- real. Imagine like shamans who haven't even got discovered by, oh, right, by civilization. Wow. You know what I mean? Like someone. Who, imagine who these. Knows? No. Imagine these dark shamans that are like. Imagine the shit they must be experiencing. Like they're intentionally dark and they don't even care. They're still wow. drinking ayahuasca and doing curses on people and stuff. That's why they say uh, Daytura, which is notoriously known for giving people bad trips. And uh, it, it's a very popular kind of evil witch or what they call a brujo, which is a, a bad guy shaman, whatever you want to call it. They use that plant to set bad people. intentions and yeah, just fuck What Do they up. use it on themselves and to curse people or they give it to people? Uh... That's a good question. I would assume that they take it themselves. They connect with certain malevolent energies, and then who knows what they do. But I know I've heard, I've definitely heard of the stories, stories about shamans going into the astral plane and you know throwing like astral darts into other shamans or whoever. Might might not even be other shamans. They just might be just. And you hear that spike. You hear that in different. You hear that in different contexts. We've got to talk to Raphael about it. Interview him about all this dark magic shit because he he's got some good knowledge. But he even talks about, like, if you think about the witch archetype, what are they always? Bitter oh, yeah. and angry, and they live alone in the, in the heart, forest. and they're ostracized. And they're <laughs> brewing a cauldron full of toads yeah. and plants, and here we are drinking plants and yeah. toads. It's witch, it's but witchcraft, it's sorcery. But it's like, you know, like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Like, think about a knife. You can use it to cut fruit and feed a family, or you can use it to literally murder someone, family. and that's how yeah. extreme these things can go. And, of course, with psychedelics, it's... <sighs> That's why you need to work with people who know what the fuck they're doing, who have a good heart, good intentions and precautions, you know? And so far, man, this retreat seems like the... This is a good retreat. I'm not even saying that to yeah, just this is, this to is a good promote retreat. them or whatever, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it as we go on, but... Yeah. Magic is real. That is the point of this video. Harry Potter, man. That's a documentary. <laughs> I, I kind of... You know that uh, market that we're talking about in Iquitos? There it is. Oh, it's bloody like cockroach. cockroach. <laughs> it's like a druid. There's a shaman spying yeah, right? on us yeah. and shit. <laughs> See what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are these guys doing? Yeah, but apparently they do... Like, it's very common for the shaman to do, like, a protection spell or whatever before. And it works. And it works, yeah. Because when you're tripping, you can see yeah, yeah, what yeah. they have done in energy field. And mapacho, that's a like what they consider a protection spirit. Like you, you will never. I don't think so anyway. But I, I highly doubt that you'll ever see an ayahuasca shaman who doesn't smoke mapacha. It's like the quintessential thing. I've heard even that mapacha they they regard it as like the top, top master yeah, teacher. Yeah. If you were to put these in hierarchies, if you believe in that, but so and not even just these shamans right? here. The shamans in Mexico also really, really? revere not mapacha but tobacco in general they call it San Pedro they revere and, yeah like they really they look at it as like a, oh, as right, like a right, right. divine teacher San Pedro they call it they call it San Pedro yeah really yeah it's green and they rub it on they rub it on your for protection before mushroom ceremonies interesting like the cactus like the cactus and you've never done San Pedro either not the cactus but I have a whole thing of San Pedro of tobacco powder oh do you mm-hmm. wow yep San Pedro yeah, San Pablo it's a different world here man and they take it on a whole other level like they're oh, talk- you know, have, you've, you've heard about the dietas, the plant yeah. dietas, right? And how, like, this shaman, Justino, takes it, like, so seriously that you can only eat... What, what is it? You have to diet one p- specific plant for, like... She's could be, whatever, three months minimum or whatever, you know? It could be six, six months, months I think he said. 12 months. Yeah. And, and he you can only that, eat fish. Um, Jose said that this shaman here is is won't even take another psychedelic because she's so scared that she'll lose... Her relationship with the plant she's been working with. Yeah, she refuses to smoke 5 meo DMT. Yeah, because she thinks that it'll like purge her of all her knowledge that she's been building up. 
and I can kind of see where she's coming from because oh, yeah. I've even felt like that, like, you know, when you have you ever had a period where you just trip too much and then you kind of just it's like yeah. you, you know, when like you're like you have a psychedelic trip, it's like painting a painting and like you're waiting for that paint to dry, but then you just take another trip, so you're just like mixing all the colors mm -hmm. and it just I don't know, it gets all distorted Muddy. and shit. Yeah, yeah. So I've had those kind of experiences. So. But man, this is a lot of ceremonies. Too many. I, I thought it's that I was, many. dude, I legit thought I was like, oh, maybe I'll do like one or two ceremonies or maybe one every other ceremony, but I don't know. I, I'm going to leave it to ayahuasca. I'm going to just yeah. take it step by step. I don't, know if I'll do, I don't know if I'll do every one. I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. Like if it feels right, I'll do it. But as of like right now, I feel like it's a little bit overkill with mm. all the ceremonies and I'm going to chill. Or maybe even just like a mic, you I know, like him that, one, one dose and then a micro dose. One, yeah, one yeah. dose, a micro dose, like just a yeah. So you like you won't, you're not gonna blast off, but you might sort of just yeah. still be in that space a little bit, connect with the group. Yeah, that's what I want. But yeah, I'm just gonna listen to my heart and my head a little bit. Ah, uh, I don't know about my head. <laughs> it's gonna be into a lot of trouble, but it saved me a lot of trouble too. So I don't know. It's safe. Ayahuasca is safe. Yeah, so we gotta remember. Physical, yeah, we just gotta keep remember that no matter what happens, it's safe. Trust. Yeah. Trust, trust in the process. Hmm. <laughs> I just imagine like one of those dodgy shamans, I'm sure that's what they say just before they rape someone, like shh, shh okay, just trust. trust. Zzzz. Shooting Sorry, the darts I went dark there, but <laughs> that's very common, so we've got to be very real common. for a second. It was very common. Um sexual misconduct with shamans. Oh yeah. Dude, you go to Iquitos and it's common to see like signs of like uh warnings of staying away from children. Man, it's very so it's very <sighs> common for them to have like pedophile sex rings and it's that dark magic yeah how crazy voodoo. is it how crazy is that like it's just, just somewhere on earth in the, in the middle of the jungle in the amazon that all this crazy witchcraft and mm. ceremonies and stuff is going on there's pedophilia and all kinds yeah, of dude. weird stuff it's dark man like people tapping into malevolent spirits to do harm upon others like it's like truly evil shit on a on a whole different level you know especially like preying upon like tourists and who knows what these, some poor women have gone through because they trusted this guy. <laughs> That's why it's, man, nah, we're very blessed to live in this digital age and oh, have yeah. the internet Jeez. and you can actually research reviews. and have reviews. Yeah. And, and this place seems to have amazing reviews. Um, yeah, they take, they took the, like, the medical consultation, they take it very seriously. They have a, a lot of people, man. There's three shamans, which is really cool. And they all sing Icarus at the same time, yeah, though. That's yeah. what I'm, I feel like that might be a little overwhelming. Ooh. It's gonna be like... Wah, Unless it's wah, 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 wah. Like this harmonized thing. It could be cool, though. It's gonna be a tornado of sound. I wonder if they have... If they use those feathers. I, I always... I've had that, like... On my last really high dose of mushrooms, I had this ayahuasca shaman that just transported to me and was, like, helping me heal with that... Leaf with like, vision? Sha, 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 sha. Like, I saw it clear as day, but I felt... The shaman doing this, en this energetic healing, like like a guide, a spirit guide, <sighs> like fucking, it was insane. Oh man, tomorrow, Jesus Christ, tomorrow, we're gonna wake up yeah. and we start. Cambo, huh? So, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. Like I said, I could go through waves and I was way more nervous coming here. And I remember like landing in Iquitos and seeing the rainforest and my anxiety like kicked up more. But then as I landed, especially after I talked to Jose and I met these people, nah, it seems like a good place. So it's, many it's, people it's the tribe, it. you know what it's I mean? So, well, I, the way I keep thinking like, man, if these people could just take it like this all the time, like I should, I should be not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're taking it every it. day basically all these people and they've been doing some of these people have been doing it for two weeks a month and they're doing like five ceremonies four ceremonies a week imagine having like 200 ceremonies under your belt I thought I was experienced and even the people who've done 200 ceremonies they'll yeah, still they'll come like, to the conclusion I don't know shit yeah, I'm, a, said, be I'm shit. a beginner yeah. I'm level one I just started oh, Jesus Christ I guess it depends on your path for me it would just be too overkill but that's like my trip at the moment because these last three yeah. years has been like not not even anti psychedelic but just kind of like I don't need the sh I don't need the spiritual mysticism stuff I just yeah. want to focus on just 
really life. every day. It's just life, yeah. man. You know, like traveling. Traveling to me is like the physical counterpart of a psychedelic it is. experience. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, you're like you're leaving your ordinary world, going to this new realm, this new culture. They speak this smells, new language. Colors. Just, yeah, smells, foods, like yeah. people. And you learn so much about yourself because, you know, we're all connected, so you learn more about humanity. Being confronted with crazy things you don't see. Yeah. So, so I think it's like a good balance, you know. Ayahuasca is, well, psychedelics in general is more for, like, exploring those inner worlds. You know, and sometimes we need to go within, and other times... Because you have the spiritual materialists who will say the external doesn't matter, but then you say, at, under the same breath, you say everything's connected. So, like, <laughs> which one is it? And I think that just depends on which, I don't know, maybe which side of the pendulum yeah. swing you're at. Sometimes you need to go more within, other times if you go too within, it's like, no, nah, maybe you should balance out and you should go more e external, you know. Build a business, clean your room, you lazy fuck. Get a girlfriend or something. <laughs> <Make your bed. laughs> Meet people, yeah, just, you know, just like simple things like that. And sometimes that can be more challenging than facing your demons. Like yeah, a really it high is, dose. that is actually kind of true. Or like... You know, or talk to your dad, or just oh, some yeah. shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's that's like the real fucking heavy shit, right? Yeah, that's true. Like really reconciling your family traumas, but not just by going through your trip, but by actually talking to yeah. them in the physical world. That's like really, really tough stuff. Oh fuck, man! Two weeks. I'm taking it easy. I just decided. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yet. <laughs> I don't. I can't decide. I don't know. I don't know. I. I just, yeah. We'll wait for the first ceremony. See, this, this is why I wanted to record our thoughts because it's just going to be interesting to see what I'm happens. Gonna try, I'll trust the first dose. <laughs> Two weeks later, we do every single ceremony. We do the 5-MeO-DMT, the San Pedro. We move here. We're like that guy. <laughs> yeah. oh, I guess I live here now. <laughs> this is my home. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll, if that's what's meant to happen, I'm for it. I'll, I'll hang out in the jungle for a little bit. <sighs> I, I don't get to have breakfast on Tuesday morning. I don't get to have breakfast tomorrow either. Tomorrow. So we don't because I smoked weed. You could skip that too if you wanted to. What, the purge? So I don't think I want to do that. I did the cambo. Or whatever. Mm, I'll leave it to the shamans. Yeah. I'll just leave it to their hands. And I know some people at home could be like, well, how can you trust your life under these shamans? They got to. What else are you going to do? You could say the same thing about surgery. Like, what, you're going to put your life in the hands of this surgeon that you don't even know? Fuck. Because he's studied this his whole life, right? He's earned that place and earned those skills. Cambo should be fun. And yeah, well, and then well, then you could say with the shaman, but how do you know that they've done the work? Like, do you really know? You think she has? Yeah. 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 If she's spitting out metal nails... <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of tell, too, just by the people's energies. Yeah. And I think it's really important that they're like, they have a sense of humor. Yeah. That's a really, really, really important factor of what makes a good shaman. If you, if you find a shaman that takes his job way too seriously and he doesn't laugh, run the fuck away, for real. That's a charlatan right there. <laughs> and you're probably gonna get hurt. But you don't wanna take it too far either, so. So and tomorrow, like, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna capture a frog from a tree, <laughs> gather its venom, burn a hole into our arm and rub the venom into our arm. So. Well, technically, on a scientific level, what, from what I learned from interviewing this Cambodian practitioner, they said it's technically not a venom. It's like a, it's just a frog secretion, because a venom would imply that it's bad for you. So I don't know. Just well, sort of if you do enough of it, true. But then anything could, yeah. like water could Salt. be poison. Right? Salt. So that's tomorrow. Mushrooms. I'm sure. If, I'm sure if you took a hundred grams. I'm not nervous for Cambo though. I, I can handle. No, 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 no. Can, 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 Cambo's fine. It's just physical. Yeah, I can handle twenty minutes. If, if anything, will prepare you for ayahuasca and help you deal with that nausea. You know. Yeah. I hope anyway. I've never done Cambo just before ayahuasca. I hope so this is shit a first. everywhere. It's actually nice that we we come here and we don't do the, the ceremony on the first day because every retreat that I've gone to. No, I, was, I thought night. I thought you guys were gonna do it tonight, and I was coming today, being like, I'm not doing it tonight. Uh, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it's good. Because I, I talked to the guy on the phone, the health guy or whatever, and he said the 12th is the first ceremony, which is today. But it's not. Oh, it's it's not, not that. He just told me that for whatever reason. Oh. Falcon? <laughs> no, I think the, the health guy. Jerry uh, or whatever his name is. Jerry. <laughs> Rafael Lopez. Rafael. <laughs> Jerry. That's like, <laughs> Rafael, <laughs> Rafael Lopez. Rafael Lopez. This means fucking Jerry? I mean, Smith? Jerry. <laughs> hey, Jerry. <laughs> 
Well, anyways, guys. All right. This is just day one, so Fuck, we haven't even goodness. drunk anything. And yeah, we haven't done anything. We're already, already going through shit. Oh, I didn't record. Really? Nah, just... I also want to give a shout out to my good friend Jason Stevenson who does awesome free guided meditations. It's always good to do some meditation training and prep your mind for these type of psychedelic experiences. So go check out the description box below, click the link and I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Me, I love me.